I think that it's just another example of some stores that can't compete against these retailers because they're selling things cheaper. And also dress farm just didn't keep up with the online merchandising. People want to buy things online. And if you're going to get people into the stores, if that's the only way to, to really sell most of the products, which is the best way to sell, because if you're, if you're seeing something there and it's in your face and it's on sale, you tend to buy it more than just, you know, ordering online for the convenience and they couldn't get people in the store. So they're closing all of the stores, I guess, within the next year, 650 stores. That's a lot. And if you look at the stock, Asna, the stock is now a penny stock. It was worth over 23 back in 2014, and that was only five years ago. Now it's it's pennies, pennies on the dollar. It's unfortunate, but it's another example of, of a retailer just going under their ways. And also, you know, a lot of people that shop at Dress Barn also like Chico's. And so that's, they're seeing a little bit nicer products with Chico's. So the, the ladies are going from the Dress Barn to the Chico's, I think. So Dress Barn just, just couldn't make it. Uh, I'm curious about fast fashion and fast fashion's role in all this, the rise of Zara and other companies that are able to just turn the merchandise around within a matter of weeks, not seasons. Mm -hmm. How does that play into Dress Barn's closing? Again, again, it goes to the whole thing. How are you going to get people to buy? You have to get them emotionally excited or it's the price point, okay? And, and again, you know, buying clothes sometimes really is the excitement and the emotions of it because you think it's something that's a hot item or it's in style for in this season and you want to buy it right away. And sometimes it's not the price. So Drash Barn had good prices, but they, they have other places that have good prices too that you can buy. So the thing is you they couldn't excite people to buy the fashion of that time but that specific, uh, you know, whether it's spring, summer or fall merchandise. They just couldn't get people emotionally excited to buy their products and they couldn't compete anymore. If you're looking at, at A versus B, the sales for the price of it, it just it, people wanted to go to B versus A, which was Dress Barn. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Melissa, the physical space of these stores is still valuable. We see a lot of online players opening up more and more physical locations. When does it make sense for a company to simply shut down versus maybe be an acquisition target for an online player? I mean, but you know, you look at the stock, like I'm saying, I mean, they're well past the acquisition phase. Like they should have been looking at that when the stock was around maybe five, six dollars. Now, now if you look at it, you say, well, who's gonna buy it now? It's, they, they let it go too long. You understand what I'm saying? Like they're, they're, you're probably right. There was a point that they should have been looking at that. The people in charge, though, didn't or they didn't work hard enough to find someone. And so at this point now, it's, it's next to worthless. And that's why they're shutting down the stores. And it's unfortunate. But you see this happen over and over and over again. They, they have to act faster to either improve sales or they do have to find someone to buy them out. And they didn't act fast enough. And now you're not going to find anybody, most likely. Well, one company seemingly coming back from the dead right now is, is Toys R Us. Uh, I'm curious how, how, yeah, I mean, I'm curious how you're reading into this. Is this uh, a, a, a new, a Toys R Us for a new era? Or is this sort of a, just a little blip in the history of the company? <laughs> Well, they, you know, you look at it, you say the timing of it. They're probably going to come back and open up these new stores now before the holidays. So they'll probably have a great sales right out of the gate for the Black Friday and the Christmas holiday sales. But are again, are they going to be able to make it long term? If this if this is a turnover, if this is a new phase for Toys R Us, what are they going to do differently? Now, they're saying they're going to have smaller stores. They used to have 30,000 square feet. Now it's going to be 10,000 square feet, but that's still pretty big for stores. So they said they're going to have a different experiences for consumers in, in the stores. But I mean, if you like toys, it was a great place to go because you had everything, everything under the sun, but they couldn't make it. So again, I'm not sure that just having smaller stores is going to be enough. They, they need a niche. They need something. And even though they'll probably start out really well because of the time of the new stores opening with the holidays, are they going to be able to carry it through through the periods of the year, which is pretty much January till October, when most retailers are slow? Because if they can't make it this go around, then they're probably not going to make it. Make it. Is there space yeah. in consumers' consciousness for a specialty category-specific store like Toys R Us where you have Amazon, Walmart, Target investing more in the toy space because you're going there anywhere. You're doing your entire shopping trip at these e-commerce giants. Is there even space for something like Toys R Us anymore? Sure there is. There definitely is. You've seen retailers do well that can... That again, it's the specifications you say, this is a really, really special thing. I mean, I'm going to use this as an example, even though this isn't about a, a store, I'm going to use American Express. Now that's a bank. 
But American Express, people pay more because they've made it a niche like this is a special, special card. So you can have stores do that with products. This is really special. Tiffany's. Tiffany's is a good example. Tiffany's has done well and they sell jewelry and it's high end and they have so, some lower end things, but again, it's Tiffany's. So you have to find a niche where it's about, again, it's the emotions. This is really special. I really want to get this toy at Toys R Us or whatever it is, but they have, that's the marketing. That's the marketing department. The marketing department, the people that are running that have to find a way to make it so special that you want to go, you want to go to the store, you want to buy the toy from Toys R Us versus buying it from Amazon.